So the skeletons are actually a lot easier to paint because we're going to be using the dip method. And here you see my first set. I sort of wish that I would have picked one color and stuck with one color rather than doing sort of a mishmash. My theory was that the skeletons um, are various soldiers that are recruited into their army, so they would have different colors. But um, in one sense, I sort of wish I would have just picked one color, maybe this light blue color, uh, just to tie them in a little bit more because they're not super bright, especially compared to the Dakon. Um, but I'm not going to change at this point and show you that uh, it's relatively quick uh, painting these guys. So I went ahead and based these, spray painted them with that silver that I showed earlier, and I'll show you how easy it is just to put on the base coats. Because all of the shading is going to be provided by um, the dip that I'll be using, and I have a couple other videos that, that show this with other miniatures and other games. But this is pretty easy. You just want to get a base coat down. And the reason why I chose silver is because the uh, armor um, I usually just pick a spray paint to prime that will be one of the dominant colors. So you can pick pretty much any color but I figure um, trying to paint all this armor would have been the most difficult so I use that as the spray. And so I'm just getting all of the bone and just painting it white. Again, I just use cheap, cheap craft paint for this. And clearly, you'll get better coverage if you use dedicated miniature paints. But because, again, I use white and uh, black so much, um, I just use big bottles of that. So just really, you don't have to be super exact. You just want to get all the spots that you need to with the white. And then, again, doesn't really matter, uh, but I'm going to, uh, what color do you do next, but I'm going to do, for these guys, this olive green color. And so, again, this is craft paint as well. Um, I'll show you here. This is just avocado um, craft paint. Uh, and that's because I don't, I would use my Reaper uh, miniatures paints but I don't have this color and I happen to have this darker olive green so yeah it really doesn't matter as long as you're getting the color that you want and because the silver is a lighter base than the black the colors actually go on more easily than when the primer is black and so I am just getting all of the coat or the cloth and coloring this I would say that um, painting the Dakan took me about two days worth of painting I mean obviously not painting all day but um, it took quite a bit of time and I should be able to do all of the undead um, in just one day. The last time I did this, uh, it took only just one day for me to do it. So these guys are faster. And I do think it's because I'm not going over black and it makes it a lot easier just to get coverage. Because with the red and white, I needed to do uh, two coats of it just to get it to stick. And with this lighter primer undercoat, the silver undercoat, I think the paint goes on a lot more easily. And the last little bit is 
this wine cloth here. I hope the video stays in focus. I apologize. I, it's difficult to paint with the camera sitting right in front. But just make sure that you're not coloring any of the armor because you want that to stay silver. And again, I usually do this in assembly line mode where I will do um, each, each of the four different types. So if you look here, there's four different sculpts of the reanimates and I'll do one set uh, all in green, olive green, and then I'll pick another color and do four, four, four like that. And then with the archers, um, do something similar as well just to change up the colors. But again, uh, I do think that your army will look better if you just stick to one color. So I suggest just picking one. Style color I think is purple. Um, but you, you can pick whatever color that you want. Alright, so the green is done. Um, next I'm going to uh, grab the brown. And this is, let me see, this is one of my Reaper paints. This is Harvest Brown. But you can pick basically any brown. And what I'm doing is the belt. And we'll also do the shield. And I kind of need to brown. I did use a different brown for my first set, but it's fine to have variation. Um, I think that's it for brown. So you can see from this guy that the brown that I chose is a darker brown versus this one, um, but that's fine. I, I like to change things up a little bit here and there. I'm using tanned leather for his sword hilt. that side then this side and that's pretty much done you can use palomino gold that I used for the decon the gold on the decon um, doesn't really matter uh, this tan leather is a little bit darker and I wanted the undead to have sort of aged and rusty looking armor which is what will happen when um, you put the uh, stain on is it sort of makes it a little more rusty looking and it goes into the crevices so it gives shading but that that's it pretty much um, I'll also uh, repaint this black down here um, for basing but that's what I'm going to do for the rest of the uh, skeletons before dipping and I'll show you the next step which will be dipping all right so here I got all of my miniatures all painted with solid colors and no attempt to shade or anything like that and I have this poly shades antique walnut and you gotta mix it really well um, and I have just a bunch of throwaway brushes like this that I bought at Walmart. Uh, I don't even remember how much it cost. It was really cheap. So, because you're not going to reuse this again. So basically, you want to grab your miniature and just load up your brush with a stain and glob it on. 
and get it everywhere. And the reason why I chose to use a dip method with the undead is because it gives it that sort of rusted, weathered look. Whereas with the Dakon, I wanted them to look really sharp um, and sort of crisp uniforms and, and being all neat. Whereas with the undead, you know, they, they, rose, they rose up, the, their clothes are rotting and all that kinds of stuff. And so their armor isn't going to be really polished or anything like that. And the reason why I don't literally dip it, because some people do actually dip it, is because you need to somehow get the excess paint off, or the excess varnish off, and the, I, I, I don't want to do that. I think it's easier to control the amount with this little brush, and even though it takes longer to do it this way, um, I think this is a better way to do it. But if you want to literally dip it in into the thing and swish it around and somehow you know, shake off the excess or use a Q-tip to get rid of the excess. Um, feel free to do that. But I found this method to be uh, the better way to do it. So be pretty liberal and you want to get um, all of the nooks and crannies uh, well shaded. And that is all there is to, oh, let me get the shield here. Got most of the cape. No, I don't really bother doing the underside of the cape because you're not really going to see it. Got that, and that is pretty much it. Here, let me see. Where's another? I can compare with the before and after. So see how bright this is, but the shading here uh, really gives a lot of shadows and gives, uh, gives it a lot more depth. So I really like this method. You can buy, um, here let me do an archer. You can buy quick shades, I think it's called, from Army Painter, which is made exclusively for this. But it's like $25 for a can. Now granted the can is a lot bigger than the can I'm using. I think this can was like I don't know, eight dollars, um, but I think it. I think it's the exact same stuff. And the thing I like about the poly shades is you get a super strong protective coat of polyurethane. So with one step, you're you're giving your minis a strong enough coat that you can actually throw these minis together uh, in a box and they won't scratch up. Now I do have to, because they're shiny, I do have to um, spray uh, dull coat on them, which is uh, this stuff, Tester's dull coat, to take the shine off of them. But uh, if you want a quick way to paint miniatures, this is a way to do it. Because all you're doing is just one coat of color, and then you're letting the stain sh uh, provide the shading that it needs. So I really am a fan of this method when I want a lot of minis. And, I, and I've done this with Zombicide, uh, with Conan, um, wherever I just have a million minis and it's not worth spending a ton of time on each mini because I'm trying to get a lot done at once. So those are, those are basically the two methods is um, spray painting things black and then just putting a coat on top and then this method, which I think is more subtle because it provides shading, um, these are the two ways that I use to really crank out miniatures quickly. So I'll go ahead and do the rest of that. And you got to wait 24 hours for it to dry. Okay, so while we're waiting for the um, the skeletons to dry, I'll show you how to go about painting this guy. And um, I do base coat him pink, and here's the reason why. Um, I want sort of his the flesh of this carrion worm to look fleshy, and so the base coat pink will help out with that. 
And what I'm doing is actually a red wash. So just adding some drops of, again, cheap acrylic red. And I'm using stuff called um, Future Floor Polish. And I know that they don't make this stuff anymore. Let's pan out. Um, I think this Future is now in a yellow sticker. So you can still buy it. But it's basically acrylic. And what it does is it enables you to make your own washes. So I'll add a couple drops of that um, to this red. And then I'll get a big brush, relatively big brush, dunk it in a bunch of water, and then mix up uh, some red. I won't use all of this uh, red, but uh, you'll get a feel for it. Um, you don't want it to be too thick because you're not actually painting this thing red. And so I'm just gonna glob it on and just like the stain, the wood stain, you want it to actually fill into the crevices but not stay on the surface so that the pink is showing through. So that, that's the goal of this, is to slather it on. And yeah, go ahead and stick it up in here. Because uh, we're going to be painting um, over this, so it doesn't matter if it globs on everywhere. You make it a little bit thicker. See how it sort of makes it look a little bit um, fleshy and gross. And that's sort of the look that I'm going for. Yeah, that's good. And then we gotta wait, wait a while for this to dry. So this is how it dried, which really highlights the underbelly and makes it look like a worm, a giant worm. And from here on out, it's just regular painting. I took, uh, I'm going to be mixing a little bit of black with this brown to make it a dark brown. And um, I'm going to paint the scale, uh, whatever this top scale is. This is going to need two coats. It's not going to cover entirely. And I don't know if I'm going to give you a good angle on this. But basically... So here it is with the first coat, and as you can see, it's a little bit streaky, so I'm going to put on a second coat to try to get rid of these streaks. Now that that is done and drying, I'm going to go ahead and start working on this section here, the skeleton and his mount. So I'll start off with some chestnut gold and basically paint the saddle. And I choose to do the saddle first because um, I tend to pick out colors that are deeper recessed we're sort of in the backdrop or background of the piece and then it's easier that way than not to get other paints on top of that. 
and so since this is a first color to go down I can be a little bit sloppy um, because all the race parts I'm going to paint in afterwards. And I'm actually not going to be putting the um, wood stain onto this section, but we'll actually be using a different stain. You can use the regular stain that we did with the rest of the skeletons. Um, but this just makes it a little bit faster since I won't have to wait 24 hours for it to dry. Uh, and then I'll do this cloth that's underneath the saddle. Uh, and I'm going to pick here, um, what color is this? Rusty red. So I went ahead and did black for the reins and um, added some brown uh, for the shield and the handle uh, black up here as well. Um, I'll go ahead and do white now for the skeleton. I do that I'm gonna do the silver for the armor all right so I did all the silver and don't forget the spear tip is silver as well um, I did do the mouth white and its butt because we're going to um, put green on there later. But um, all the silver is on there. And now I'm going to do the cape and I'm using marine teal for the cape and all of the cloth that he has around him. So that's with the marine teal finished on the cape as well as down here. And now I'm going to do red for um, the handle of the sword over here. Which is really bent out of shape, actually. Look at that curving up. I don't care, though. Um, and then the banner on the spear. Or the lance. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm putting golden blonde on all of the claws and teeth of the crawler. So I put some already on here. Um, I lightly put in a uh, dry brushed in because I had dark brown right in there uh, where it connects. But uh, the rest of the places I'm just putting a, a amount of just full strength um, golden, whatever this color is, golden blonde on all of the claws and this is why you don't want to glue this thing down see how it's raised above the um, platform here so that I can access all of the claws and whatnot and not only <clears throat> these claws but also um, these peg-like structures up here, uh, which I'm not entirely sure what they are, but I include these guys as well. Okay, so I pretty much have all of my colors, base colors, laid down, and now it is time for more washes. 
Like I mentioned before, you can at this point go ahead and um, put on the wood stain uh, just in this area. You don't want to stain the red pink part because you want that to maintain sort of that reddish pinkish color. But you can go ahead with a brush and just selectively um, do this saddle and the skeleton while leaving everything else um, just sort of plain, as well as these um, claws. So if you can very carefully um, stain all of these parts, go ahead and do that. Now the reason why I'm not doing that is because um, I don't want to wait another uh, 24 hours before finishing this guy. So what I have is Army Painter uh, Quick Shades, um, and these will dry, you know, in about 10 minutes. So. I'm going to go ahead and just use a strong tone for most of the parts. And this stuff um, goes on pretty easily. And I actually squirt some directly on to the figure. And where, where I want it to go because it uses actually quite a bit. And then just use your brush. to just spread it around. And you'll notice that this color is actually more black, creates black shadows rather than the brown shadows of the wood stain. So it's gonna look a little bit different. So if you want it to be consistent, I would go ahead and just use the wood stain like you did the rest of your units. Um, if you're not in a rush like I am to get these done. And so it's also a little bit more subtle. Uh, it just goes into the cracks and crevices this way. And just from that I already sort of ran out. And then um, you'll do the same with these claws. And I'll go ahead and squirt some on my palette here rather than squirting directly. And get some on your brush. Basically, you just want to get the edges. I don't. I don't get the tips like that, so that um, you get a sh shading in where the claw goes into the flesh of the crawler. So that's with the inking being done on the claws and the figure up top. Wait for that to dry. We'll go ahead and now ink uh, the mouth and the tail. And I just grab some um, clear green and we'll be using my making my own ink by um, adding some of the future floor polish. We don't need that much since it's just the mouth. Um, load up my brush with some water. Let's see if that's good. And then again, this is seeping in all the cracks and crevices. And I want it to be a little bit more green, so I'm gonna add more paint to my mix. So there's the mouth. And then I go to the tail. So now I'm going to take jade green, which is just a lighter version of clear green. If you don't have uh, this, just add white to your clear green and you'll get the same uh, color. And basically I'm going to go around and color all of the zits, these raised things. And there's a lot of them, so you just want to go around and find all of them and um, try to 
cover as much of the raised area as possible. All right, so now I grab luminous green. And again, if you don't have this, just add white until it gets lighter and lighter. And what you're doing is you're highlighting each of those bumps with just a dot of this. So it's a very subtle effect. Um, but adds just a little bit more to these. Alright, so after doing all these green dots, the final step is just the sword. And I will go ahead and use um, polished gold and I painted this tan earlier and just go over it with polished gold and all we have to do now is base oh I do tape this off with blue painters tape and we'll just spray paint this top part with the um, protective spray the dull coat because I want to maintain the gloss here and I think that the wash actually provides a protective coat so that you're okay with um, the paint not rubbing uh, off. Of course the last thing you got to do is base here and this is the one from my first uh, core set and this is what it'll look like once you I base without gluing it uh, gluing this guy down and after I'm done basing um, I will actually, at that point, push this down and glue it permanently. Um, and I think he looks super cool. Out of all the miniatures in the set, I really like this one the most because this worm uh, looks cool. So I didn't do a tutorial for the Rune Golem because um, I painted both of them at the same time with my first wave of painting and it was super simple Basically, I spray paint this with the gray that I showed at the beginning of the video And then I just use light gray uh, With a stiff brush like this and literally in 10 minutes I, I was able to dry brush this lighter gray all over uh, the rune golem uh, and, and yeah, it took really only 10 minutes uh, to do all that and then I went back painted in the black for the cape and the arm armor shoulder pads um, and then did the same gold palomino gold color for all of these parts here uh, white there and then red and then in the inside cracks I just did a light blue and was pretty much done with just that so these rune golems even though they're big they are super, super easy to paint, especially compared to the carrion crawlers. Um, the rune golems are actually much easier to paint. Um, but I still like the carrion crawlers better. I think it's a really cool sculpt. He pretty much, uh, I use the same method, but instead of using the uh, poly shades, I went ahead and did the same um, strong tone uh, army painter shader uh, that I did for the carrion crawler guy and he was spray painted with this base steel and then um, colored the all these parts in and then after I dull coated him I went back and painted these gold just directly uh, because I don't want the dull coat to take off the shine of the um, gold parts so I wait until after I dull coat the whole thing before I go back and uh, color it with the gold. Before that, I just use tan uh, on those parts that are going to be gold. And also, and his base, I did carve a little bit out, had to carve a little bit out, um, but not as much as Kari for some reason. So you only have to paint one of these if you have two core sets because they're unique. You can't field two unique named characters. One quick note, I did use different basing material for the uh, Wakar arm, army and the Dakan. And basically it is different kinds of stone. 
so for the undead, I use this lighter, uh, and then for the Dakon, this, this darker stuff. Um, and then also for the flocking, I use the brighter stuff for the Dakon, and then this um, lighter stuff. And the thinking behind that, and the reason why I'm, you don't have to do two different kinds, but it just distinguishes the armies uh, even that much more. And the idea is with the undead, you sort of have the ground that is dying or more deserty, whereas with this one, you have more life uh, and it's a little bit brighter.